Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Rangers Alcohol Inks. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's just a quick snapshot of what I'm going to use. Um, Yupo paper, I'll talk about that as we get started. That's important. Um, you'll need some felt blenders. You'll need alcohol inks, and I use something that you could move air around with, a little squishy guy, So, um, and then alcohol blending solution. So the first card I'm going to do here is, and that's the little guy that I use to blow air around and move the ink. The colors I'm going to get started with here are uh, a pink, a red, and a yellow color, and I'll include the actual ink names down below. So take a peek at that. I have a piece of Yubo paper. It is just the regular weight. It's not the heavy weight, although you could use that. And I have here blending tools, one circular, one's rectangular. The traditional rectangular one is the one that's here. And this is felt pads. So don't confuse that for, with foam but I like really using the round one. And so I'm gonna cut off the felt around. I saw Jennifer McGuire do this and I thought, oh, excellent idea, because I really like the round blending one, but you'll see me use both in this. So the first part of this video, you're gonna see me make different concoctions of alcohol blending inks. So at the end of this, I will turn them into cards. And I actually have a bonus card, one that I had previously done and wanted to share with you. So I'm using the Yupo paper here and putting some yellow ink on it. So you'll see different ways of doing this and techniques. I have not put any alcohol on here. I've not put any blending solution. I am just putting the inks down on the paper and then watching them bloom and move. Uh, you'll see as I do different techniques, I'm about to add the blending solution here, they'll move a little bit more. You'll start to see some different blooming, them coming together where you have maybe orange colors where the red and the yellow start to commingle. So this is the cool thing. And then you'll start to see, I start trying to move the ink around and you really need to either have the stamping effect to move them or some blending solution or alcohol. And I actually don't use alcohol in this video, although you could, and I may in a future video do that. I really just use the blending solution for these cards. So I'm adding in the third color here. And what I'm really going for is, and I love alcohol inks because it never looks the same every time. So whatever you do will look different. Even if you use the same colors, they just blend and move and have a mind of their own. And it's really because the alcohol and how fast it dries or how much blending solution you're putting on here to move it around, how you move it around. And if you don't want to buy the little air mover contraption thing that I have there, you can certainly use a straw and blow through it. I've seen people just blow on it. Now these are alcohol inks, so they do smell. You have to be in a ventilated room to use them. So uh, the further away you can get, the better from them. They do have a scent and a smell. So the other cool thing, if you haven't used these before, is if you mess up, it's okay. Literally, you could use the blending solution or al alcohol and remove all the ink. Now it will stain the paper. And let's talk about the paper. The Yupo paper is it's non-porous, which is what you need really for alcohol inks to work and to move around. But it's, um, it's synthetic paper. So it's non-porous. It's waterproof. It's pretty stain resistant. So it does stain somewhat. Um, but you can build on it. So what happens is you keep building this and you'll see later on, um, it, it, you can constantly change it. So if you're unhappy with it and you come back after it's dry and you're like, oh gosh, I, I just don't like this or that about it, you can change it. So no worries. You cannot mess this up. And again, it will look different every time. So you see, I'm moving this around, I'm adding an in ink. 
I like when you get these kind of spaces where you see the lines growing. I like bright colors. You'll see in one of the cards that I'm going to do that it's a little bit lighter in, in dollar. And so you'll see that actually right now. I am using the turquoise and green and, and indigo blue. And again, I'll put those colors down below. So take a look. Um, and this I'm just stamping and dabbing and I'm not moving it around with a whole lot of air. I, you see it bloom, but they're smaller. You see like the more I touch it, the more, and I have blending solution on that pad, but the more it just stays small, but then starts tiny little blooms, a bunch of them. So I'm going to leave the card looking just like that. It reminds me, okay, and I'm not an artist per se, like Monet, but for some reason it reminds me of a Monet um, when they're that small and the blues and the greens. And you'll see later on too that the inks remind me of different things. I don't know if you guys feel that, but I like the one up at the top reminds me of sunset and other ones I'm going to do have some meetings. I'll put some photos in there so you can see. So on this next one, I put some blending solution down so you'll see it's moving more than it did initially on the other ones when I started. I started with the indigo blue, so the darker blue, and then I'm adding green, um, and then I'm adding the turquoise color. So again, I'm using more blending solution than I had in the previous cards right away. And I wanted just to see, you know, what effect did this give? What kind of movement will the ink have? And I actually decided to add in a fourth color of blue and just to give it some more dimension. So as I finish up here with this last one, I don't know if you get a, a feeling about the work, but with this one, the feeling I'd mentioned the other one is kind of a sunset. This was a, like, as if you had a, a thing of water and you dropped ink in and it just moved around like when you're making Easter uh, eggs, but also it reminded me of the church in Barcelona. I got the pleasure of going there last year and just thought that the stained glass reminded me a lot of these cards. Um, and so I wanted to share those images with you. One other thing that might be worth mentioning about Upo paper is not to put your hands all over it before you start the inking process. Your oils can affect it, but if that happens, you can take alcohol and clean it off and, and that'll work perfectly. So for this next one, I rotate back to the orange, the pink, and the yellow colors. I'm using more of a streaming across the page effect on here and with the ink, and then I go ahead and, and throw some blending solution on it. If I had put more, it actually could have started the ink 
rolling downward when I lifted up the paper, but I, again, really like the bright colors. So I tend to use more ink than I do the blending solution, but it's really, it's your choice, whatever it is you want to do. I think, again, this is a really cool thing about alcohol inks. I've seen people do them, although I'm making cards here, I've seen people do them on much larger pages of Yupo paper, and I am going to try that sometime. So I do decide, okay, so now that I've got these three streams of ink, I probably need to do some blending around. And so I do decide to go in and, and stamp through uh, the paper. So you'll see the yellow starts to go away. And one thing about yellow, I've noticed at least this yellow is that it will, like you saw me throw it on there, it will push the other ink away if it lays on top of it. But if you use too much blending solution, the yellow seems to disperse pretty quickly and it leaves more of a stained look. And you'll see me do that if it wasn't on this one, it was on the one previously. And so again, not a problem. You just put more ink down and move it around. So you can see there it is right there that I did it. I put too much down on the yellow area and it started to kind of really move and move it away. And so I just threw some more while I had the blending solution there. I just threw some more yellow down and it magically reappears. So you'll find different inks behave in different ways. The red is a very strong color. It usually stays pretty present. I love that you get this blending of colors, whether it's this, you know, blue, and if you put green down, it, it, it's a different shade. Or in this case, the yellow and the red work really well to produce an orange, although there is orange ink. And then you've got this violet color in there, kind of streaming through. Now what I was trying to go for up in the top right, you'll see there's a big yellow round circle, more of a sunset look. So one of the cards that I will show I, I did previously had a sunset feel to it. And so that's what I was really just looking for, what that might look like. Last one I'm going to do, I'm going to use just two colors. I know in the other ones I've been using three or sometimes four, but in this one, I'm just going to use a purple, I think it's a, called a Twilight, and the other one that I had been using, um, the, the violet color one that I've been using in the previous card. So again, I'll put the the colors below so you know which ones I used, but I thought I'm just going to do this with two and let's just see what happens. To me, I don't want to over blend. I, I'm not using colors that are so opposing, but sometimes I've had it where I've mixed inks that, and this is true, I think with painting too, that became kind of muddy. And so there have been times I've kind of swiped the card and started all over again, but I'm picking very complementary colors um, in, in these, but play, play with it, experiment. Um, and again, I use a little bit more alcohol blending solution here. So you're seeing a lot more soft movement versus some of the more circular, bold colors in the other ones. And, and you'll see some of that come back in here, but you can see this marbling effect as the solution, you know, blend. So, you know, whatever you want to do, again, your preference. And then if it's lacking, you'll see some of them are too light for me. So I go back and add more color, more blending solution, and I go on until this is finished.
So this was the second card I make and I didn't like that little dot up at the top. So I talked about how you can go back and change things up. So that's what you're going to see me do really quickly here. I go ahead and put some blending solution on that just to try to get some movement. And then it kind of whitened it out a little bit. So then I add some more blending solution to disperse the ink and then I add more ink back in. So again, you can play with this, have some fun. So here are some quick shots of what the final results are. I let mine air dry. You could use a dryer to do this, but they dry pretty quickly. Um, some of the ones with more of those veins in them, like this one, those take a little bit longer to dry, but I let mine dry for a number of hours. I go do something else and then I come back. But here are the results and then we'll go ahead and get started on making some cards. So for this first card, I was really inspired by the blues and the greens, and I went through some of my dies, and I found this one. It's a Gate Dies by Crafter's Companion. I'm not sure if they're selling it anymore, but if I can find it, I'll put the link. I encourage you just to go through what you have in stock. Um, I decided to use this cardstock that I have. Um, here and I'm going to cut into it. I love the fact that the gates open and so um, I did that off camera but you'll see it's pretty cool when you match it up with the background. In fact it reminded me a lot as I put it together of a garden in Paris and I'll show you those pictures after this but um, I'm going to go ahead and just glue the gate to the card. They're the same size so I didn't have to trim them down at all and I will attach it to the base of the card, which I use the same color as I did for the um, background of the gate. So it's this kind of gray color with a, a sheen to it. So I thought it was pretty cool here, and I thought the only thing it was really lacking is it needed a sediment. I debated whether to put it outside uh, around the border or do I put it in the gate, and I decided to, to put it on top of the ink background. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But before I do, here are a couple of pictures that I don't know why when I saw it, it reminded me of this place in Paris. And while you don't necessarily see the gates, I think I kind of combined Versailles with that, that beautiful garden as we were walking around. So this is the sediment by Simon Says Stamp. I'll put the link below that I added to the card. Again, using the same colored backgrounds, I thought, let me do something a little bit different. So I had a triangular corner cut die that I thought would work great for adding some different visual uh, to the card. So I'm going to attach it on there. I cut it down to the typical four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm ready to attach it and I realize there's still some little leftovers from when I did the die cutting. So I make sure I get those out and I'm going to use a glue pen to attach it. What I love about the glue pen is that it can get into all of those little areas. So you can see a tape wouldn't work. Um, around the edge where I had cut. So the glue pen is great. It allows me to do that. I could put it in little places and it's going to stick. So I go ahead and attach it to the card. And I'm like, okay, so now I need to do something else with it. And I wind up putting a sediment in the middle. 
So that's what you're seeing here. I had an oval die piece of paper that I had, it was left over from something else I was working on. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna use that as a base just to make it, you know, stick out the sediment here. And I would really encourage you to go through this project or any other project. Look at what you already have on stock. If you have different colors, it doesn't have to be the white card stock. It could be an, another color that you used, but use what you have. Uh, the dyes, you know, there's probably a lot of dyes if you look in your collection, if you've been doing this a while. If you're new, again, I'll, I'll put the links below uh, so you can go out and see what I did, but you may find other dyes that work just as well. So then what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a couple of other things to it. I've got a butterfly here and I thought, okay, I'm going to put a couple of them together. Again, these are things I had already had cut out. Um, and I thought, okay, I can use these here. It'll add different dimensions. So I put three layers of them together and combine them and then add them onto the card. Okay, full disclosure, you may not be able to tell there, but I was putting a lot of glue on that butterfly, did not need as much as I did. I wanted it to stick, but it almost became a little too sticky to my fingers, um, which luckily I did not get on the card, but I easily could have. It's always good to put something on top that's a little bit heavier just to make sure that glue sticks pretty quickly um, so it doesn't take that long to adhere to it. And then the butterfly went over the edge. I intentionally did that, kind of off-centered it in the corner, and then I just was cutting off the other little pieces so it didn't hang over on the card. And then really one last thing, I wanted to put a hello sediment that I had. I It's, it's a really thin one, kind of like the butterfly. So I cut out one that I actually had some extra leftover paper that was the ink I had put the blue and green ink on it and so I put that on top and below it I stacked one other card stack that I had for this hello stamp so I decided to use this one and it reminded me this is the one that reminded me of the sunset but I wanted to use the left side of it I kind of debated whether I had this dye and it was of roses and I thought okay I could put this white cardstock over the background and I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Let me try something else. Let me actually cut into the Yupo paper, which I wind up doing. I will tell you it's a pretty intricate dye. So make sure you have, if you decide to do this because it's plastic paper, make sure you have a, a die cutting machine that's really strong. And I wind up putting this on a white cardstock and decide, okay, that looks a little too white. I wind up adding then a background using a blending brush using dusty conquer the distress oxide and add a sediment to it and so that finishes off that card i actually have one more bonus one that i had previously done and so i'm adding that on here just so you could see a different use of that background if you like today's video go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like the content please subscribe so you can see more of it and then I will leave you with some final shots of the cards. And thank you so much for joining.